Right, so I know delay's already been done, so I guess might just be covering a few things from earlier, but yeah, first question, what is tape delay? And well, tape delay is one of the first, well, ways of recording delay, which is a signal that is then repeated in <coughs> decaying echo, usually with feedback, self-oscillation, however you want to do it. Uh, earliest forms of delay before that were, were through a telephone wire from one plate to another just to literally get three seconds feedback and then sent back, which is quite an extravagant way of recording it. <laughs> from 1920, the first delay units were built in the 1930s, and then the Germans actually pioneered it. They made it in radio, because obviously they invented this wireless radio, whatever else, during the war, you know. Um, yeah, and first proper delay unit that was actually made into one complete unit was the Watkins copycat, which should be my next slide if I've done this right. No, no, that one. Yeah, the one copycat. The most famous tape echo unit in Britain, the copycat also happened to be the first repeat echo machine manufactured as one compact unit. It was designed by Charlie Watkins in 1958, apparently after he heard the similar sound effect generated by two linked medium quality tape recorders, but it apparently was bigger. Marino, Marino, I have no idea who that is, but just like the Roman Tour one, the copycat is a cult effects unit, but the WEM was adopted by rockabilly and surf culture in the early 50s, seeing that it was much earlier but a distinct unit. So early slapback, and then obviously the Americans pioneered that through their whole rockabilly scene and their bebop scene, and um, yeah, so they got that in the surf scene as well. So te technical applications of that, you can use delay in several different ways. Obviously, you've got your extended feedback, so you can use dub, reggae, crossovers, that sort of thing. You've got, um, sorry, just give me a moment. Yeah, sorry about that. Long feedback delays of dub, and then you've got um, different patterns. People can build rhythms using different delay uh, time signatures. So you've got one sixteenth, one eighth, one quarter, one one, all the same. And then, um, yeah, when magnetic tape recording was first developed in the late 1920s, musicians and producers started to realize there were new possibilities in delay technology. The way tape recording works is the tape runs at a constant speed, whilst the writing head magnetizes the tape with electrical currents. That is equal to the signal that's being recorded, and then is the tape is played back via a read or playback head. So you've got on the Watkins copycat, you've got five playback heads there, 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 and there. And the rates are increased down there. You've got depth and swell. So, yeah, as you increase all of that, it gets louder and progresses into self oscillation when you go past a certain point. Like on Logic, with your tape delay, as we've all used it a lot of times, if you go over 50%, I think it's 55% actually goes into a self-oscillation and then the gain drives itself through the tape delay. Some of the first people to pioneer it properly were uh, Lee Scratch Perry and King Cubby. King Cubby was the first guy that was supposed to have actually invented tape, like his way of using tape delay. Um, and that was usually on the snare of a track or on a vocal. People like Jacob Miller were some of the first recording artists and Junior Wells and Junior Mervyn clean some keys in the streets, have you heard that too? Uh, yeah, I've got a sound clip here, which I played for Joe Kinaldi's earlier. I might have lost the mic, there it is. Yeah, and in this track, you can just hear how easy to delay via a desk, putting it through all delivery channels and then sent up, mixing dub style in the desk. Spring reverb as well. Yeah, 
This is the machine he used after creating his own as a Fisher Expander, the Roland RE201, 1971. He got one even though for the 1972. And yeah, the Roland RE201 is the most legendary of the set. There's the 101 and the 501 as well. But um, it's legendary because it's got free reverb as well. So you use both at the same time, you just get that cult sound. And yeah, it's commonly known as the Space Echo. Famous, obviously, not just for being a delay, also a free reverb. So reggae and dub artists do the time live as well at dances and yeah it just it's got that tape sound very early some of the frequencies are cut at either end as you would have expected usually thin quarter inch tapes and then um yeah oswald ruddock which king tubby meets up carry out with thompson people like that were some of the first guys to use it before that they used delay on a few reggae tracks and rock steady to get slap back so on a one hit chord off beat you know we've all heard that loads of times but yeah and take delay and dub it's one of the most pretty uh, key ingredients in the genre it's one of the many offshoots of reggae music dub is pretty much structure and music is the same as reggae music but it focuses on the rhythm so drums bass rather than guitar vocals as it was previously yeah and they first dub was started by flipping over a record and they had versions on the other side which is basically an instrumental and putting that they would be asked to remix it at first and people would then just mess about with outboard effects but they obviously don't have stems or anything like that you literally just have the record and you have to cut it and extend it via the tape which was a cool concept but yeah you know dubstep lots of people absolutely smashed the technique a little while ago in red bull academy there was um Marley, the mad professor and he was teaching him how to originally use his styles of mixing which is four track tape machines he runs all of his stuff through there usually drums to all the drums at once to one tape and then guitar to another tape vocals to another tape and then any excess that he has to do send to the last tape and literally mix it as he goes using outboard effects and hitting them up with the faders at certain points using pops to turn up different um, frequencies you want to delay down or bring and of course at the same time si early 60s well late 60s going on to early 70s you had funk which also used a lot of it prog rock psychedelia kraut rock all pioneering delays of, at the same time and Yeah, I've got a quote here. King Tubby truly understood sound in a scientific sense. He knew how the circuits worked and what electrons did. That's why he could do what he did with tape delay. And as I said before, he managed to use tape delay before he even had a unit by customising his own piece of kit, same as he customised his own desk, which was a European design at the time, and he just ordered the parts over and worked in an electronic shop in Jamaica. How I use delay in my production. I use analog and digital. I think you've all, I've all showed you my WAM before. I've got I and the WAM drop set. And I usually do it the same way they did. I put it through um, my desk, which is a small desk, into it for my sound card straight in the back. Put all my channels through. And then just dub them out like that. It's easy. 
easy process, sounds good. And digital obviously hates delay or wave and um, natural logic delay. Those are the only two I use at the moment. I, I haven't really had a look at any others. On almost all my productions, you'll be able to hear several types, different types of delay. The type of music I produce at the moment is very bass heavy, so dark standard mids, very heavy bass lines, and a lot of delay to add atmosphere. I use it to create atmos and space in mixes. And also, send it to buses, expand out the buses. That's the main way that I use it, really. And it's used in many electronic genres now, soul, funk, hip hop and dancehall. To almost dancehall, it's used in the kick rhythm, you get, and it just says copy that over, just delay that, so they get separate drum kicks in between. Yeah, when I want to use analog for delays, I usually only to use my Watson floppy disk tap, but the RE201, I can lend one to my local studio and they sound absolutely blinding. Um, yeah. Sorry, I keep getting lost in the notes now. Which one really annoying me, but Oh yeah, sorry. On solid state delays. The first solid state delay was built in the Philips Research Lab and was called the Bucket Brigade device I mentioned earlier. This unit was groundbreaking because it was a hybrid, half digital and half analog. The way it operates is by transferring charges from one drum digital to another. The signal would then be divided two ways upon entering the analog delay module, so half the signal would dry and half would pass through the delay unit. They were then mixed together. The speed of the delayed signal was the time that it took that half of the signal to travel through the capacitors in the delay module within the unit. It's because of the way the charges pass from one transistor to another that the unit was named Bucket Brigade Device. In the Victorian times, they built them into a fire, they had a fire line passing buckets, so it makes sense. But by the 1970s, DBD technology left the late 70s had become much more compact, so they could have also almost half heavy, so that's why you get the Roland RES201, which is the double dual pedal, which is yeah, used by a lot of guitarists now. And then transferred to WAP Lounge units when it became digital. Um, yeah, you get an extension on the high end frequencies and the lower frequencies when you use digital gear. It just sounds, it sounds cleaner and it sounds as you would ex expect for something that's more clinical. But a lot of people use older delays because they sound analog, man, they sound cool. And a lot of people still use them and love the sound. And a lot of studios have gone back to using them. An inexpensive digital processing unit for readily available now, so still a lot of people use those. But more advanced analogs, uh, digital hybrids are being built all the time. And the first of these modules came as expensive lap mount units, not the same as their predecessors, but as electronic technologies became smaller and more compact, you can get half lap mount units now that have more effect than any old full lap mount. And you can also just use software, and software is easy to use and affordable because most of the time you can get free, they have tons of the program that you're using. And yeah, um, when you're using delay, the effects are great, depth, swell, uh, you can have different forms of analog, different frequency bands, you can use but you can uh, sometimes you have a low end and a high end shelf on them, so you can extend to what amount you want to take them out of them. You get um, analog, analog simulation units, and you get digital units, the same as now. And yeah, that's about the sum of it, really. Um, I just had a quick question. H delay, man, on yeah. Wave is brilliant for emulating it, but it's, it's really a sound that you can't emulate, if you know what I mean. It's, it's really it's a really great sound, but as I said, you can get the guitar pedal, and they only cost about £100, whereas the actual unit costs six, seven hundred quid, and yeah, they're pretty expensive, and you wouldn't want to take it out for, if you drop it, then it's dead, and that'd be a shame. <laughs> 